Hey YouTube, welcome to Thinking of Pi. Today, we're going to be taking a look at stepping motors. Now over the last couple of weeks, we looked at a basic motor which can rotate continuously in both directions, and then we took a look at a servo which we can control the angle on. Now the stepping motor kind of combines the best of both worlds. The stepping motor is capable of rotating continuously, but it can also rotate to a specific angle. This was accomplished using 32 different electromagnets that are positioned around the shaft. The 32 electromagnets are divided up into groups of eight, which are controlled by four different leads on the motor. What we do is we send a pulse down each one of the groups and hand it off to the next one and the next one and the next one until it completes a complete rotation. If we wanted it to stop at a specific angle, we would just turn the power on to one of those groups or a combination of the groups if you wanted to make a partial step. Let's go take a look at the circuit and I'll talk a bit more about how the stepping motor works. So we've got a pretty simple setup here. We've got our power supply module here that can be connected to a 9 volt battery with an adapter like this. My battery's dead, so I've got it connected to an AC adapter that just goes into the wall. We've got our stepping motor right here, and that's connected to the uh, stepping motor driver, which is then connected to four GPIO pins. Each pin is used to control one phase of the motor. Now, I mentioned that the motor has four phases, and each of those has eight steps. However, this motor has a reduction gear in it, which has a reduction ratio of 1 to 64. So instead of taking 32 steps to complete a rotation, it's going to require 2,048 steps. That gives us a lot more precision over what angle we want to rotate it to. I'll get more into that when we look at the code, so let's go take a look at it and we'll see how this works. So here's our code. This might look a little confusing if you're not familiar with Python, but um, we've got our GPIO pins here, each one set for each of the motor pins. These are actually the addresses, the hardware addresses anyways, of the pins on the stepping motor driver. And we need two different sets because we're going to rotate it in both directions, one complete rotation each way. So this is counterclockwise, this is clockwise. You can just see that they're opposite of each other. We've got our setup. And this set of instructions here is just to tell it to move one period, one period being one complete rotation. So it's going to move um, counterclockwise and it's going to move clockwise and we've got three millisecond rest in between each step so it should go pretty quick and this one right here is just telling it to actually move this is the function telling it to stop and right down in here is the main part where we're going to be doing each of the steps. Now, each step, or each phase anyways, is going to consist of 512 steps. Since the reduction gear is 1 to 64, it needs to take 512 steps to complete each uh, phase, and then four of those to complete each period. So it needs to be reduced to 512 steps per phase. Let's go ahead and run this. We want to make sure we turn on the power module and then give it a try. There it goes. Um, I've attached a piece of cardboard there to make it a little bit easier to see. It makes a complete rotation there in each direction. There's not a lot to it. Now, stepping motors are used in a lot of different electronics. They're pretty useful. I know they're used in CD drives, old floppy drives, cameras, stuff like that. I think probably my favorite example, though, is with um, a valve. 
if you wanted to electronically control a water valve, you could hook up a servo to it and open it halfway. But as soon as that water pressure comes, the servo is not going to be able to hand, handle the pressure and it's just going to force the valve open all the way. If you use a stepping motor, you can tell it to stop when it gets halfway open and then it's actually got the strength to keep it at half open so it doesn't fly open like it would with a servo. So this actually wraps up um, a little bit here on motors. Next week, um, we'll actually be looking at shift registers and continuing to talk about shift registers for a couple of weeks. Shift registers can be kind of confusing, so if you're not familiar with those or want to learn more about shift registers, make sure you check out next week's video. But until then, make sure you guys subscribe. Love to read your comments below. And I'll talk to you all next time. Thanks.